Alrighty, welcome to a vintage cube draft. We're in the eight player queue. We're drafting the Alpha Frog cube. And uh, ooh, I like what I see here. This is a first pick Hole Breacher. So Hole Breacher is one of the best cards in the cube. And it's not as good as like any of the Moxes or Power, but it's in the same tier as Orcish Bowmasters, Swords to Plowshares, Minsk and Boo, Mana Drain, that sort of thing. I actually think this is better than Mana Drain. I'm going to be taking that and looking for draw sevens. If you just cast a draw seven with Hole Breacher in play, you basically always win because they go down to zero cards in hand you get seven new cards and you get seven treasures if that's not enough to win you must have been in a pretty bad spot passing miscalc spell pierce xander's lounge windswept heath bribery recurring nightmare retrofitter yeah we might get something back here we might even get retrofitter back not everyone seems to value that card quite as much as i do uh here i think it's going to be a pretty easy marsh flats there was a time gone by where treachery was a bomb. It is no longer the case. It's just cost a lot of mana, and uh, stealing a creature doesn't even always do that much against some decks. But I'm going to be happy to take Marsh Flats here because Hole Breacher, you don't know what colors you're going to end up. You have red for Wheel of Fortune, green for Sail into the West, and of course blue for the rest of the draw sevens. But black's also a common uh, pairing for Vamp or Demonic. And the next best card is like Rafine's Tower, which is a tri land and this is only a dual land right now but i think marsh flats has a lot of room to grow Ooh, oh man there's a fable but there's also a wheel of fortune i gotta take wheel whole breacher wheel is just too good normally i would just take fable because i think it's a better card than wheel of fortune but it's close enough that uh i the addition of whole breacher makes me want to take wheel maybe i'll get prismari command back there's also narset in the pack that's brutal it just these three cards all being the same pack, mostly Narset and Wheel, honestly, because I would love to pick up a Narset too, and you could really have the draw seven Punisher deck. But one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I don't think it'd be unreasonable to get Prismari Command back from here. Okay, this pack has some good cards too. Solitude is a very good card. I do take Solitude very highly. Itali's good, though. I don't know that I want to start down the Itali like Flash Sneak Reanimate path given what I have right now. Teferi Time Raveler is great. I even have a Marsh Flats, which should make it a little easier to cast. And then Jace Friend's Prodigy is good at flashing back things like Wheel. I think I might just take Jace here. I like Jace a lot better than Venser. Venser's actually getting removed in the next cube update on Magic Online and uh, the like official Magic Online cube, and I think that's actually totally fine. Ketria Triumph is also of some interest, but I think the cards in this pack are too powerful to pass. Honestly, Solitude's not that far away. It's actually really good to the wheels, too. When you're casting a bunch of draw sevens, you can afford to be pitch casting things. But I think I like Jace here. Oh, and I, then I probably just take Mystical Tutor to, to try to set up this uh, Wheel of Fortune plan here. Also, now that I have Jace, Mystical to get the things I'm going to be Jacing is pretty good. There is a Pest Infestation. The card's awesome, too. But I think uh, Mystical is going to be more what this deck needs. So a pretty solid start here. Okay, so this pack does have a Teferi Hero of Dominaria, and like I said, the Marsh Flats makes it like a little bit more easy to imagine being able to play that, but I'm probably just going to take Fiery Confluence. Fiery Confluence is a really flexible card, because sometimes dealing three to each creature is amazing, sometimes dealing six to the opponent's amazing, and destroy target artifact is great a lot of the time. Most often you go like kill one artifact, deal two to every creature, and kill your two creatures in play, or kill your artifact, deal one, and then deal two to you because you don't need the last mode. Plus, I have Mystical to go find it and Jace to flash it back, so I think this is a good spot for Fiery Confluence. Also, even though I don't mind playing a bunch of colors, starting with just two colors is still better. Like, it's better to have a consistent two-color deck and not have to use quite as many picks on lands, though red-blue famously does require a lot of lands to function because you just have pretty heavy color requirements. Well, speaking of lands, I guess I'll just take Spire Bluff here. I do like Hex Drinker. If you uh, saw one of the recent videos, I, I soloed a couple people with Hex Drinker. Like, just you can win casting no other spells. But Spire Bluff is great here. I'm blue red. I even have a Marsh Flats that's looking to get paired with a, a duel of some kind. You know, like an Underground Sea or Badlands, Xander's Lounge, perhaps. Um, but other than that, yeah, we're we're straight blue red here. And now there's Faithless Looting, Mana Morphos, and Pestermite. I'm really not a big believer in twin kiki stuff which is again why with the new magic online cube that's going to start on the 20th which is yeah in just a couple days i'm recording this uh, a couple days before that pestermite twin kiki exarch are all out which i think is a totally fine change 
I'm probably going to take Faithless Looting. It's pretty good with Jace. It's pretty good with Mystical Tutor. It's good if I get Echo of Eons, which is a card I really want. Oh, Spell Pierce Wield? Yeah, I'll take Spell Pierce. We're just straight... We're just straight blue-red. And uh, I also really like Fiery Confluence covering my bases here because I have a lot of good action against control decks. Here, it's Chart of Course versus Bone Crusher. I think I'd rather Chart here. There's also Woodfall Primus, but I don't need to do the sneak stuff. Oh, Fire Covenant came back. All right, I will take it. This Marsh Flats makes Fire Covenant a little bit more palatable as well. I didn't think any of the red or blue cards would come back. Oh, and Teferi Time Raveler with four cards in the pack? That's egregious. I also like Blood Tithe Harvester well enough, but I'm not passing a Teferi in this spot. All right, blue, red, maybe splashing white, maybe splashing black. I mean, we'll, we'll have to see. And now there's a Dark Slick Shores. That works out pretty nicely, too. Over Savannah. Savannah's not much of a fixer for me. I guess I'll take the Mind Slaver, though. Not playing any of these. Oh, Virtual Persistence is actually a reasonable card. So my anti-creature stuff looks pretty good, especially if I end up playing the black. Having Fire Covenant plus Virtue plus Fiery Confluence is plenty. And then Spell Pierce against Spells plus Teferi is also good against Spell Decks. And Hole Breacher is just naturally good against those kinds of decks, whereas... Uh, Sometimes you got to do a little work, but I've got the wheel and I haven't seen or passed, of course, Echo Vion's Time Twister or Time Spiral. Oh, and there's Mana Drain. Well, I didn't have to choose between Hole Breacher and Mana Drain. Easy Mana Drain here. Like, I like Palace Jailer. I like Luris. <laughs> I do like Coveted Jewel, but uh, this is so clearly a Mana Drain deck. This is going to work out really nicely. Maybe that Toxic Deluge will come back, but once you have Fire Covenant, they're basically the same card. So Toxic Deluge tends to be a little bit better in decks without creatures, because the biggest strength of Fire Covenant is you cast this, pay a bunch of life, and kill all their creatures, and all yours still live. So, like, playing this in Rakdos mid when you have a bunch of creatures is awesome. All right, well, this pack is going to show you how highly I value Swords to Plowshares, because I will take it over Baleful Strix and Brazen Borrower. Oliphanta would be a nice wheel, too. But uh, Swords is just such a good card, and right now... I mean, I'm going to take the Virtue out because I probably am not going to play that. I'm going to play Swords and Teferi almost for sure. Plus with Jace for Inch Prodigy, having Swords is awesome. Oh, this is a tough pick. So on the one hand, there's a Savai Triome and a Sacred Foundry. Actually, Sacred Foundry is just better, I think, because Marsh Flats can get Savai, uh, Sacred Foundry or Swamp. So it's already those three colors. It doesn't need the Savai Triome and having an untapped land is better. But on the other hand, there's a Flash. We've already seen Atali. We've already seen Woodfall Primus. Those are two good ones. Haven't seen World Spine Worm, Atroxa. Do I want Flash? It's a really high upside card, but we're already yeah, at the beginning-ish of pack two. Flash Revelark? I didn't take the Lark, though. <laughs> Not that that's actually even that good of a combo. The other hand, Sacred Foundry makes Marsh Flats into a red source. And I'm, I'm definitely going to be splashing white and probably black. You know, I'm going to take Sacred Foundry. I feel like this deck has some pretty good win conditions already. And I'll probably take Scrubland too, kind of under the same theory. There's a Burst Lightning here, but I just picked up a Swords. I have Fire, Fiery Confluence and Fire Covenant. There's also a Third Path Iconoclast, but I think I'll just take Scrubland here. I just want to make sure that I, I've got a good four-color mana base because... The upside of casting Swords to Plowshares, Fire Covenant, Teferi, or putting those cards in my blue-red deck is pretty high. So I think taking the lands just makes it a lot more likely to function. Oh, and there's a Raugrin Triumph. Perfect. Yeah, there's Through the Breach, but again, I don't have anything that goes with it. There's Probe, and <clears throat> this pack has my pick for the best new cube card we've seen in a while. Inti, Seneschal of the Sun. I've talked big about this card, and you're actually seeing it this weekend in Pioneer, or this last weekend in Pioneer, uh... <laughs> at the at the USRC, but uh, yeah, this card is really good. I think Inti is, is closer to Lelia than most people think. This is not Magda, you know. This is not just a kind of replaceable two drop. Inti lets you immediately get a counter, immediately start triggering it, and when you discard to any other effect, you also get to to exile from the top of your deck. So really like Inti. Okay, here's my reward for taking all those lands. Expressive Iteration is a fantastic card. I like this member, and I like Chandra, but I feel like I've got some good removal spells and some good card draw and iteration is, is great. This pack has a red-white fast land. I guess I'll just take all the fast lands, huh? There's also Thraben Inspector and Kroxa and Bitter Reunion, but I don't think we're doing those things. And I like the mana base here. 
I mean, I've got now two tri lands, right? Because Marsh Flats gets that. Two duels plus three more fast lands. So like seven total duels, which is going to give us a lot of extra mana efficiency or mana fixing. Don't think I need Kaito. I don't really have any creatures to bounce. So the question is blue red tap land or forked bolt. Uh, I think I'll just take the tap land. I'm doing pretty good on lands, and most of my lands come into play untapped. Like, I know the fast lands can come into play tapped, but uh, they often don't. And then Raugrin Trium and Marsh Flats also can be tapped lands. So here, it's Toxic Deluge versus Prismatic Ending, and I actually think now we're at Prismatic Ending. I don't really like having both, and I kind of have two sweepers, so taking another spot removal spell is good. Plus, Prismatic Ending hits Moxes and Talismans and other cheap non-creature things. In a four-color deck, it's really good. Oh, Baleful Strix Wield. This, this deck's turning into a delight. So if you didn't know, this kind of deck is why Library of Alexandria, or is where Library of Alexandria is good. The two best cards, in my opinion, are Pulse and Haywire Might, but we have a really strong four-color no green deck. In fact, none of my lands fixed for green, so I think I'll just take Hero of Bladehold under the off chance I sided in. Oh, Burst Lightning came back? Yeah, I'll take that. I love this kind of deck. Look at this. Three different one-mana removal spells, one-mana counter. I'll take Gifts. There's not a 0% chance I play it, but I'm going to move it to the board to start with. Mana Drain. Oh, man, I love Exploration, this kind of deck. But, you know, I'm just going to take Hanger back. I'm not playing Exploration. Like, my mana base is so good, and none of my lands produce green. I don't have a single wasted land. No, no off-color Triumphs or anything. All right. Oh, and there's a Mox Pearl. And a fourth year Lingus and a Lion's Eye. And those are all great cards. Now, though, this isn't really looking so much like a Lion's Eye deck. But I'm going to take Mox Pearl. It is, it is better than fourth year Lingus here. Okay, so just to kind of look at what we've got going. We have Hole Breacher Wheel, but I would love to see another draw seven here. So if we could pick up another one, I would be really happy. Oh, wow. This pack has a couple tough decisions. There's... Polluted Delta, the One Ring, and Preordain. Verdant just way worse than Delta. In a rare, you know, divert, you know, kind of like in a rare statement, I'm gonna say that uh, actually my lands are pretty good. I don't need to take the fetch land here. I think I'm gonna take the One Ring. Uh, I do like Preordain, but I've got Charter Cores and Faithless Looting, Teferi, Expressive Iteration. I have some decent one and two mana plus a three mana cantrip. Or, you know, whatever you want to call it, Teferi, plus Jace and Baleful Strix. Having something that puts my card quantity up with one ring is nice. And uh, I just picked up a Mox to accelerate it out. And I have a lot of cheap removal, which one ring into cheap removal is pretty good. Okay, look, now I can take the fetch land. Uh, I think I take Misty over Tundra here. It's actually kind of close. So Misty is a Raugrin Triumph, but what's awkward about Misty is it gets untapped blue or tapped red, white, blue versus untapped blue white i actually it's tough if i knew i was getting like a volcanic i would clearly slam misty but making sure i have more good lands to fetch is pretty nice it also makes marsh flats into untapped blue i actually think i take tundra here so it's an odd pick i know oh there's underworld breach i do like that one but i don't have brain freeze and i'm not going to get back lion's eye most likely so I kind of want to take Currency Converter. I have Looting and Charter Course and Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, this is a really good Currency Converter deck. So I will convert some Currency here. Okay, this is another close one because there's a Celestial Colony, which I absolutely love, and a Chain Lightning, which is also looking pretty good. I guess with Prismatic Ending, Swords, Burst Lightning, Confluence, Fire Covenant, yeah, I can probably just take Celestial Colonnade. And... Spar's headquarters is obviously just worse than Colonnade, so we'll just do that. Okay. So we get three new packs. I would love to see an Echo of Eons. This is such a good Echo of Eons deck. I've got a couple discard outlets. I would like one more draw seven with Hole Breacher, though honestly getting the first one is a pretty big game. And having a Time Twister effect is kind of nice in these decks that draw lots of cards and are a little light on wind conditions. Another reason that I think Colonnade was a good pickup, though I do have that Restless Spire too. Yeah, I mean, Currency Converter makes a bunch of 2-2s. Two um, I've got the two creature lands. I've got Hole Breacher. Yeah, I mean, I guess I, at some point I could put in this Hero Blade Hold if I needed to. Uh, though here, here I think I'll just take V-Click. V-Click's really nice in this deck. Glorybringer also would be pretty plausible. 
Feels like I have enough good removal that I can I can V-click plus V-click Hole Breacher. That's a good 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 combo. Oh, and subtlety. Subtlety is really nice too. Okay, so one more pick for a wheel. Nope, no wheel. But I could put a Luminar Gasper in my deck. I could also put a white black Talisman in my deck. Currently at 20 land, basically if you count the Pearl. So yeah, I've got some room. I could just put Wall of Omens in my deck. Luminarch is, is a much better card, but I really don't see Luminarch, yeah, being what this deck wants. So Frantic Search wield, but this isn't really a Frantic Search deck. It's barely a Faithless Looting deck. I was really hoping to get an Echo Vions to go with that. I mean, I guess I'll take the Frantic Search. I'm not playing any of these other cards. So do that. And then now, oh, Wedding Announcement and Unexpectedly Absent are both solid. Taiga does nothing for me. I don't want Fire Blast or Augur or Heliod. I don't, know. I don't have the Walking Ballista for the Heliod. Um, is my mana going to support Unexpectedly Absent? It probably does. It's a pretty good card. I don't think this is much of a Wedding Announcement deck. And I will probably try to play Night's Whisper, at least consider it. I'm not going to play Adeline or, or Wellspring. And now we're done with all the cards that I would want, I think. Oh, some good green cards there. I guess, I guess I'll take Phantasmal Image over Concealing Curtains. This deck doesn't have the mana base for Concealing Curtains, because I'm going to be clearly like a Jeskai deck. In fact, I'm probably not even playing that Night's Whisper. Because this is just looking like a Jeskai deck that's going to play a Swamp, a, or maybe not even a Swamp, actually. Let's just take a look real quick here. Right now, I have Marsh Flats, Scrubland, Dark Slick Shores. Also, the Tundra over Misty pick worked out, I think. Though I guess with the Misty, I could have taken that Taiga, so maybe not, maybe not. I still really like having an untapped blue-white to fetch, because this deck ended up being a blue-white deck more than anything else. Well, blue-white-red. It's still got a lot of red cards. Uh, what black cards do I have? I have Fire Covenant, Knight's Whisper, Baleful Strix. But I have three free black sources plus Currency Converter. Yeah, that makes me want the Covenant and the Baleful Strix and not the Knight's Whisper. If I, I mean, this is already 17 land. If I add six basics here, I'll have 16 land plus a Mox Pearl. Hmm. On the other hand, I could just play an extra land over Wall of Omens or that, or depending on what I think, actually, you know, my mana base, I could splash the wheel. Now, I really want to play Fiery Confluence, I think. Let, let's let's look at the mana base real quick. Uh, sort by color. A lot of blue cards, and then some blue, red, black, white cards. Um... So I have white source, white source, white source, white source. Like all my lands are white, which is actually totally fine. All right, so I have <laughs> eight white sources with zero planes. So if I had one planes, I'll have nine. I think my mana is actually going to be pretty good in this deck. So let's see, one planes. Oh my god. Okay, I'm going to have to do that. I'm going to do that slightly differently uh, <laughs> when I add my other lands. All right, let's let's just add lands at the end, and then. Well, I got the one planes in there. Wow, very lucky. So I have nine white sources, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Currently, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blue, but I'm gonna add like three islands probably. And that would leave two mountains, and right now, with and no swamps maybe, or maybe one swamp, I don't know. Let's see, how many red do I have? Because I feel like I kind of have a lot of red already. Yeah, I have six red sources. I kind of feel, is it better to play Unexpectedly Absent? Maybe I just cut that and play Night's Whisper. No, 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 no. I should just play the Absent. Or I could just cut Unexpectedly Absent and just, oh, I know what I need to cut. Phantasmal Image. Yeah. I can side in Phantasmal Image against like a green deck, but right now I've got no cards that are good to copy besides like Baleful Strix. So, all right. And then now... Let's add no planes, three island, one swamp, two mountain. So if we do like this, now we've got mm, 10 blue, four, five. Oh, I might want another blue actually. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
There we go, 10. Yeah, because I probably don't need 9 red, which is where I think I landed. Because these are all red. No, this is 8 red. Yeah. And there's now 4 and 4 black. Okay. Well, I mean, this isn't crazy. So for white, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, nine, I have 9 white, 9 blue, and uh, enough red, and I think enough black. Yeah, let's add one more. It's probably cut a planes. It'd be my only basic planes, but does that matter? I have a marsh flats that can get scrubland and tundra, so I don't actually need a basic planes for any particular reason. All right, let's add another blue. And I think this is good. It's basically 18 lands, but I have like Wheel of Fortune, the One Ring, and a bunch of like cheaper, like smaller card draw. There's also Faithless Looting, which isn't at its best here. The reason I like Faithless Looting is I have a Wheel of Fortune to, to draw seven. So digging for that looting, it doesn't matter if you've discarded some cards. Um, it's good with Currency Converter. It can help find my Mystical card. And it's that or play a land. And I don't think I need a 19th land. The other alternative, which I don't think I'm going to do, is to try to like get some more black sources in there and play this Night's Whisper. But you know what? I think I think we're good. All right. Time for round one. This looks solid. I don't have double red or double blue, but I have all my colors. And because I have the one ring, depending on what I draw... I might just cast Iteration on 2, and the reason I mentioned the One Ring there is casting Iteration on 2 is going to be, you know, basically down a card, I, unless I drew exactly Mox, that's funny, but I drew the Mox. But I was going to say, that that makes up for it by the One Ring. I still actually kind of still think I'd cast this, because I'm casting uh, One Ring next turn anyway. Here, let's just take Dark Slick Shores, put Jace on the bottom, and then just exile this Swamp. And pass the turn. Basically, you can use iteration as like just a draw, uh, an anticipate if you don't mind, uh, you know, missing out on the potential to get a two for one. And I didn't mind that there. Also, I really like them playing Urza Saga. Oh no, they have a counter for my one ring. Boo, boo earns. Um, I've got uh, Fiery Confluence, which is pretty good at cleaning up Urza Saga. Though the funny thing is, if they make two tokens and get a thing, Confluence just <laughs> sometimes just trades for all that. Uh, let's just play a tap land and pass, and then kind of see what, what goes on here. I mean, they're going to make a thing. They're going to make another thing. Not resolving the one ring was kind of a beat. That would have been good. But... We can do this, all right, and then you can go get something else. I mean, depending on how this works, I might be able to, let's see, if I kill, I just kill all three probably. They haven't played a land yet. Mm, I guess there's no point in playing Vendillion Click. No, I can actually play Click, so I'm just not gonna do damage. So yeah, let's just go Vendillion Click, draw out a counter spell. Dang, their deck is nice. Oh, it's Mana Drain too? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, destroy target artifact. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, kill those three. And then play a Baleful Strix. And if I can find a Wheel of Fortune or Mystical Tutor, then I'll feel pretty good about this. They are going to get to play something off that Mana Drain here. Let's see what it is. Uh, Mind Stone doesn't look like the most frightening. And I, ha I do have two decent removal spells in hand, plus this Colonnade's about to start putting in the work. So, we'll see. If I draw a land, I can also go Colonnade Attack, Leave Up Absent, slash Prismatic Ending. Well, not ideal. I don't really have, I don't think, much of an option here. What is this? Oh my god, am I going to get Pestermite twinned? Hmm. I don't like it. All right. I guess I'll pass. 
and hope to not get twinned here. If I don't get twinned this turn, I feel like I have a pretty good chance of not getting twinned because my hand is all removal. But we'll see. Dak Faden. I guess you could steal my mocks. Honestly, that's not even that bad. Oh, you could steal the Strix. Yeah. I've got kind of answers to all of this. I am behind. Okay, they're drawing and discarding. So what I think I'm going to do this turn is Prismatic Ending, the Dak Faden, leave up Burst Lightning, and Unexpectedly Absent. That is going to be my plan. So let's go Prismatic Ending. And this leaves up... Oh no, this, this is not the way to tap it. Because I, I want to leave up... Uh, yeah, enough mana to play Burst and Absent in case they go for Twin, which I kind of hope they do. Another counter. Incredible. All right. Uh, let's just get Tundra here. I'm going to go ahead and go for Prismatic Ending again because I I, I really... The, the way this game's going, I can't let them untap with that. They have two cards in hand, and I'm just going to hope that they go for Twin and don't have the third counterspell. Fourth counterspell, sorry. All right, they're cracking their Mind Stone. They're going for that Twin... They're going for speed. I mean, this is their last turn to go for it. Well, I still have uh, only one mana up. Okay. Duretti Scrap Savant. <laughs> I'm probably going to attack that. I guess I could just attack it with both Colony and Baleful Strix. That's kind of the plan. They discarded only one. Interesting. Okay, land is not terrible here, actually. Yeah, because now I have double uh, interaction up against a potential Splinter Twin next turn. This is turning out to be a pretty interesting interactive game. They've had a lot of counters. Their deck looks really good. They have played all good cards so far. Minus Duretti. Duretti's pretty bad. But, you know, if in an artifact deck, I, I think it's, it's obviously excusable. I usually end up cutting it, but I don't think it's unreasonable to play. And uh, we've had some good back and forth. The big one was my ring get encountered. And th this kind of game, I would just win the game immediately if the ring was in play. Although I guess that's not entirely true. They have a Dak Fate and they could steal the one ring. <laughs> Let's see what they do about this. The, the disaster scenario is dismember. But I can't do anything about that. Celestial Colony putting in the work once again. And we're going to go ahead and... Send in both, assuming they let us, and see where we go from there. All right, let's send in these two. And it's kind of interesting now that Baleful Strix, are they going to block it with Pestermite to save their Duretti? I don't think they are. Oh, they're going to chump there? That, that would be surprising. Because I still would get to kill it next turn. Oh, okay. Um... Well, in that case, I'm going to go ahead and pass and then draw step. I'm going to unexpectedly absent this for one here. I don't really want them using their Planeswalker. I mean, they, now that they don't have Pestermite in play, it's just not that big. I don't have to keep up my removal spells with quite the same level of urgency. So it's beneath their top card. So the Duretti's coming back in two turns. I figure I might as well send it for an extra turn. Zealous Conscripts. Okay. <laughs> I'll take four, I guess. Uh, so that... The Zealous Conscripts actually is interesting. So that explains partially why they blocked. Oh, wow. Uh, let's go ahead and animate this. And... Attack for four here. And then leave back Baleful Strix to block Zealous Conscripts. And of course, if they go for Twin, then I have Sword. So they're drawing to ready next turn. Okay. They've got their Zealous. They can't really do much with. Um, hmm. Yeah, I guess I will probably go in once again. Attack for four. I just... This is actually a win condition. And... I'm getting to the point here that uh, 
this burst lightning is probably going to go face. We'll see, though. Okay, this is presumably to ready. Yeah. Though I might actually have to attack to ready this turn, take a turn off. They discarded Island and Bolus of Citadel. So they probably have Tinker in their deck. Not necessarily, because Doretti is a way to get back the Citadel, but I think it's more likely than not they have Tinker if they have Citadel. Um, I actually do want to know what they did. Two on the bottom, okay. Sensei's top, no cards in hand. Sensei's top is pretty good. So they actually could attack there to keep their Doretti a little safer, but obviously I don't blame them for not. Draw. Oh, yeah. All right, I guess I'm discarding Burst Lightning, which is kind of surprising because it's a really good card, but... Uh, I would really like this whole breacher around. So now, let's see. I think even with whole breacher around, I should kill. I think I should kill the Doretti. Maybe not though. They're at twelve. Oh, I, they have a bolus of citadel in a top. What am I thinking? They're not just going to draw cards with Doretti. <laughs> yes, I'm going to attack Doretti uh, and kill it. So let's do that and not be foolish. And then I will be able to turn this Burst Lightning into a 2-2. And if they ever draw with their top, I mean, they get to spin. In order for them to... Yeah, I think I have them pretty much covered. Because if they were to, to find Splinter Twin or Kiki, I have swords to answer that. And if they were to also find a Counterspell and try to tap the top to draw the Counterspell, then Hole Breacher negates that as well. So... I think I'm going to take four here, or three here if they attack me. Because I'm not that worried about burn, and if I need to, I can swords my own thing. I would really like them to dig for Splinter Twin here. Okay. And they're at 12. I, this isn't lethal with the whole Breacher, so I think sending here. Oh, I actually don't really want to attack with the colony anymore. All right, I'm just going to attack. So they're at nine. Yeah, let's just attack like this and pass. Drawing mana drain means I really want to just leave up mana drain and whole breacher. I kind of have them a bit locked out here, especially given that I have swords and I have currency converter activation. If they cycle something here, that'd be really good. Like any card draw effect, this whole breacher is going to come down immediately. Brazen Borrower, the Rogue Token. Okay. And then cast Brazen Borrower. That's fine. I can trade Baleful Strix for that. They can't even really attack because of the Colonnade. All right. I, I'm glad I didn't attack with the Colonnade here. Spin their top. And I kind of like this spot. I, I feel like... Uh, I mean, they have no cards in hand, and I have three really good cards in my hand. So. And on board, Colonnade, just going coast to coast, just... Killing Planeswalkers, eventually killing my opponent. Oh, that is that a, a card draw? No, no thanks. I'd, I'd rather get a treasure. You can you can put the top on top, though. That part's fine. So the top goes away. They don't draw a card, and I get a treasure. And that should pretty much end the game. I think... I uh, don't really think they've got a reasonable out from here. And I might as well convert some currency. I guess I shouldn't tap my only red. Oh, wow. Um... Ooh, what do I discard here? I'm at six. I guess I discard swords to plowshares. I think no, no. I should have discarded the the mana drain. There's no way they have a counter spell here. So yeah, whatever. I should have I should have had swords in hand, but I suspect we're gonna be okay. They're drawing a sensei's top next turn <laughs> that they can't tap to draw a card. Uh. And then, yeah, I'll exile this. And then let's go Fire Covenant on those two. And... Because I know they're drawing Sensei's top. They're just locked out now. I mean, they're not actually literally dead, but this turn, but we know they can't win. Okay, so... Phantasmal Image is kind of interesting against Zealous Conscripts, but otherwise I think it's pretty bad and just dies to their twin stuff. I think we pretty much are set here. Oh, it looks like our opponent is too nice. All right. This hand looks okay. I've got turn two Jace, turn three just fire off a Wheel of Fortune. It's probably what's going to what's gonna happen. We'll see what they're uh, 
game plan is they're mulliganing here. Mold to six and island go. All right. Sacred Foundry tapped. I, I don't, I'm not going to play Baleful Strix over Jace, even if I did draw a Black Source on turn two, so no reason to do that. All right. Urza Saga. Urza Saga is kind of interesting because this gives them incentive to just go land go here, which makes my Wheel of Fortune a little bit more powerful. I don't think I want to miss to go for anything, so I'm not going to do that. They're going to pass Mana Drain. Yeah. I think I just wheel here. My uh, my hand is pretty bad. I can't do it. I can't cast a single other spell, actually. The only other spell I can cast is Mystical Tutor. All right. And let's just pass, because what I'm going to do is block one of their Saga tokens and then flip Jace. Okay, they discarded Mana Drain, Sahili, Bitter Reunion, Bolus' Citadel. And the Splinter Twin, which we unsurprisingly knew they had. Okay, they didn't make another token, but they also didn't tap their Saga for mana. A little bit of a misstep. To, to be fair to my opponent, like it's easy to do that because there's a lot of triggers and you have to say okay a lot. But yeah, they could have had a mana floating. I don't know how much that matters. Uh, I will block and flip, though. I don't think there's really too big of a reason not to. And I think I can discard Prismatic Ending, or Inspiring Vantage, rather, here. I'll keep the prismatic ending. That I might kill the retrofitter with. We'll see what they do. Obviously, I do have. Oh, well, if they're going to tap out, I'm probably going to fiery confluence here. We'll see what they tap out for, I suppose. Oh, they're tinkering. Okay, well, Citadel's gone. Triplicate Titan. So, what do I need to do to deal with that? I need to find swords to plowshares, I suppose. I could blow up those three things, and then plus Jace. It's kind of annoying because if I just had swords, I could deal with the Titan. I guess I can, oh, I can do that actually. It's a little awkward, but Jace, flashback, mystical tutor, mystical tutor for, oh, actually, sword splasher is better than unexpectedly absent. Probably not. I run into the risk of them eventually casting it, I suppose. But I think this is going to be okay. I'll discard Dark Slick Shores and Island. Play this. Unexpectedly absent the Triplicate Titan. Okay, so now they have a Triplicate Titan in hand. As long as they don't play a Teleron Academy, they're not that close to casting it. All right, Faithless Looting did a little bit of work there. I mean, obviously it's still kind of costly, but I think that's okay. Dak Faden. Well, now they get to discard it to Dak, but they did skip their draw step. They didn't discard it. Huh. That's kind of interesting. Um, I'm Prismatic ending the Dak again. They can't. They can't tap any of their stuff for mana right now. So let's just do that. Because this the mo the mox doesn't tap for mana yet. Plus the Jace on nothing. Jace is doing some good stuff this game. I'll tell you that much. Play Colonnade. Though maybe I wanted to play Spire Bluff to have triple red. Though I th for Fiery Confluence plus others. So their hand is five cards. They kept Triplicate Titan in hand. They. I wonder if they have Academy in their deck that would make that sense. They they do seem like a kind of light artifact theme if that makes sense. Like, it, I haven't, I mean, I've seen, like, obviously Saga, Retrofitter, Mox Opal, but they haven't seemed to have, like, this giant mass of artifacts either. Let's go. I'm going to do, let's see, two, yeah. Destroy target artifact, destroy target artifact, and Fiery Confluence deals one to each creature. It's actually a really, it's really funny because they can make a token in response, but then uh, it still dies to the Fiery Confluence. Okay. Uh, <laughs> sure. Uh, let's plus the Jace again. Don't need to use it this turn. And I think I'm going to play... I'm going to play the Raugren Triumph. I don't think I'm cycling my lands here. All right. Pass. Am I getting twinned here? Oh, no. I'm just getting borrowed. All right. Well, not playing the uh, Spire Bluff two turns ago did actually end up costing me. For the same reason I said, I would have had a red there. 
Oh, they're attacking. Yeah, they're attacking Jace. That makes way more sense. All right. Then they have Triplicate Titan in hand. They probably don't have a counter spell because they would have likely countered uh, that Fiery Confluence. Ledger Shredder. And Doretti. Oh, that's why they kept the Triplicate Titan. Okay. But, well, they could have still discarded it. All right. Triplicate Titan down. Hopefully they don't draw a zero drop artifact. Well, I probably would have used Doretti. It's just my my inclination let's animate the i think i do best by animating the colonnade and attacking to ready here not playing spire bluff has ended up going fairly poorly but them not using to ready also worked out pretty nicely all right so i kill that make that unable to do anything land go and really hope to find Swords to Plowshares if they're able to animate their Titan again this turn. Okay, they are going to get the, back the Titan. <laughs> this game is... We're going through our decks pretty pretty thoroughly here. Oh, they could also get Bolus' Citadel back. Yeah, that's, that's potentially very good. If they hit the top, they can play their whole deck. Or just about as much as they want. Okay, Pester Mite off the top. Untap your land, sure. And what do they got? Cycle Miscalc, because the top card is a land. Mm -hmm. Feels like they hit something, because otherwise they'd just be attacking. They didn't hit a land. Maybe they hit something with Decisions. I don't know. I don't love the spot I'm in, I'll tell you that much. Draw. <sighs> what to do? What to do? I think Colonnade is going to attack Doretti here. I think that's my start. And if they chump, I'll probably burst lightning the Doretti anyway. The Brazen Bar and Jace are uh, kind of keeping it parity. Plus one on Jace, Brazen Bar is uh, <laughs> it, it just breaks even. And I guess I get to chart a course without <laughs> without uh, discarding. Is their top card? Oh, their top card Snapcaster Mage. Um, okay. I don't know that. Snapcaster Mage managing the Charter Course is that bad for me, but obviously I don't think I'm in a good spot here. All right, and then I'll cast this on Doretti. Yeah, I mean, as, as it turns out, the Burst Lighting did let me kill Doretti, but I suppose my Jace would have had a lot more loyalty, in which case I would have been able to flash something even better back. So I think not playing Spire Bluff did ultimately go really badly for me. Would I have lost this game otherwise? Who knows? Am I going to lose this game still? Probably. They get to play the rest of their deck. I would imagine that's some that's enough to, to win the game with. Well, they have Drain Mana floating. They don't need to do that, but whatever. I mean, I guess they're on down to eight cards in deck. <laughs> it's not very many. Jace is dead. I'm at nine or 19 now. Sorry. And... Well, I'm going to animate the colonnade and attack. I think with a citadel out, making them lose life is pretty good. They've already used miscalculation, so let's just do this. Remand me. Yeah, that's fine. Land. I think I have a land left to get, but I, I'm not counting. Yeah, tundra and play out wall here okay swords is not the worst i mean they're at six cards in deck their splinter twin has already been milled they have a zealous conscripts left in their deck the bank buster does basically nothing if they have a time twister effect they can get all these cards back and we have a game then, then i get new cards too if not, I don't know. This We'll see. I mean, obviously there's a lot they could have here. Zealous Conscript's my wall. Attack me for 8 down to 10. Yeah, I don't feel like I'm dead here. 
especially if I draw a little bit of action, then, then we're in great shape. Mm. I think given that I'm at 10, I'm just gonna pass with a colonnade and swords up, I don't know. I could attack them down to three, but they can always just start blocking with Brazen Borrower if they need to. They're gonna get decked pretty soon here. They have now two cards. I think they just played a land there real quick. Can they kill me? I guess we'll find out. Their Bank Buster can draw a card. Colonnade can block any of their creatures. MVP of the match, gotta be Celestial Colonnade. It just does everything you need. Um, <laughs> Sensei's top, sure. <laughs> you have one card left, is it good? <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Is it a time to... Oh, thirst for Discovery. Love it. Go out on your own terms. I gotta respect it. And uh, it turns out that Wheel of Fortune wheeling away Sahili and Splinterton was pretty big. And that is round one. Alrighty. Welcome to round two. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and keep this hand on the draw. We have turn one Spire Bluff with Spell Pierce into turn two Baleful Strix. Can't currently cast Iteration or Vendillion click, but we're not that far away from doing so. We're just a blue a blue source from Vendillion or a red source away from Iteration, and we get the draw off Baleful Strix. Copperline Gorge, on the other hand, not famous for having uh, good spell pierce targets. Hmm, I could Mystical, but I don't think I want to do that. Let's go Baleful Strix, and hopefully this bails us out, as it were, of that Magda there. Oh, Currency Converter, Faithless Looting. That's really nice. We can go Converter, Looting, hope to find a blue source. Oh, I'm snapping off the block. Let's see what you cast with your ill-gotten gains here. All right, get a map token, sure. Are you going to crack the treasure to use the map? Huh. Oh, no, playing a Grim. Gotcha. The One Ring, huh? All right, let's go Converter into looting. I really don't even have another play, honestly. Um, definitely discard a swamp. And I think at this point, either mountain or mystical tutor. Uh, I guess I shouldn't discard two lands. Maybe actually I'll discard Vendillion click and I get to make a treasure off the currency converter. Well, actually, I can make. I have my option of either. I can either make a treasure or a two-two, depending on what I want to sacrifice, or what I want to put back in my graveyard. So now I'm going to play Marsh Flats, ship the turn. They can attack with the Sentinel. I can't do anything about that, but they can't attack with the Grim. Lelia, yeah, really not getting my my spell Pierce equity here. All right, smash. Make a map. <laughs> Triskelion. All right. Uh, let's take six here. I don't love it, but I think it's fine. No land. Okay, now let's get Raugren Triome. And I think I'm going to make just a treasure. Because next turn, I'm going to cast the One Ring and not be and get be safe from attacks for at least a little little bit all right pass the turn here okay i guess i might as well just draw now what do i need to find here because the lelia is going to grow this turn and so is the sentinel oh is this a questing beast they're slamming it way too fast like they're like oh yeah questing beast uh because that stops the ring protection. But whenever someone just like frantically slams the, the it taps their mana, you know they have a good play. Okay. Um, exile the fork bolt. Let's get a 2-2 two -two here. And I guess I'm going to block the Lelia. Go to 5. Sure, I'll burst lightning the Lelia. I don't know how much it matters, honestly, but I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna go to four here, and yeah, the Questing Beast did get me. I don't really know that I can Mystical Tutor for anything that does much. Guess I'll draw out the One Ring. Yeah, 
There's just not much I can do to get out of this, especially with the one ring eating at my life total at the same time. Um, no, I mean, I have swords to plowshares, a bunch of removals. Bell Pierce doesn't look that great. Maybe Phantasmal Image is going to be better. But otherwise, I think I'm good. All right, I am on the play, and... Ooh, tempting hand. Colonnade Wall of Omens is nice, but even I'm not about keeping that. All right, I will keep this. Definitely just put Prismatic Ending back, and then go Restless Spire, go. Do I leave up Mana Drain? I probably play Jace on two. It kind of depends on what my opponent does. Yeah, they just played Jetmere's Garden. I'm just going to play the Jace this turn, I would suspect. Yeah, because it can help me hit land drops. If they play Mogda here, I guess I'll kind of wish I had left Mana Drain up, but I think this is okay. Agatha's Soul Cauldron. Wild. Okay. I guess that kind of makes Jace worse. Let's draw. Let's discard Fire Covenant. Play Inspiring Vantage and pass. This is going to get eaten by the Soul Cauldron. Throw that into the bubbling muck. And then... I have Hole Breacher if they play something that draws a card. I have Mana Drain if they play something that isn't answered by, like, Confluence. I have Subtlety that I'm probably not going to do anything with. Hard Cast Embreath Shieldbreaker. Okay. That's fine. It's a 2-1. Two, a 2 and 1. I draw. Um, yeah, I suppose I will loot. And discard... Sacred Foundry, that seems fine. Fiery Confluence? No, I'm just going to chill. I don't really think I need to. Like, the Soul Card is not doing anything. The Ember Shieldbreaker is not really doing anything. I've got Mana Drain. I've got Subtlety. This all seems fine to me. Okay, I'll take my two. So no Questing Beast coming? Probably this not this turn. Haywire Might? Sure. Alright, just draw. I'm just gonna play a land, or not play a land, I'm just gonna pass and leave up Jace Block and keep a land to loot. I don't know, maybe I should play a land in case of Hole Breacher, but the thing is, I don't really need to play Hole Breacher and Mana Drain at the same turn, because I can just uh, Mana Drain and then use the Drain Mana to cast Hole Breacher. Okay. Just don't really care about that either. Ooh, I do like Currency Converter. I know there's a Haywire Might in play. I think I might lose my Jace here. Depends, kind of. Do I care more about keeping Jace or killing El Visual Claimer? Actually, I kind of like my Jace. So let's go, yeah, all three. Destroy Target Artifact and deal one damage to each. Oh, hold on. Let's just let's just do it this way so they can't fizzle the the confluence. All right, let's do this, and they can't even sack haywire might in order to make the to save the shield breaker with the cauldron because it's all dying at the same time. Pass the turn here. I don't think I need to loot now. Actually, I haven't played a land yet. If I draw a land, yeah. I think discarding Mendelian Click and playing Currency Converter seems fine to me. So they get one turn to resolve something. I, I can settle it if I need to. I don't really want to do that. But it felt like killing their three things was pretty good. And then I can use Currency Converter Jace to really start to get value. Questing Beast, huh? Yeah, I think I have to take the risk. I don't love it, but I'm at 16. Well, I just don't think pitching Hole Breacher is a very good idea. Uh, <laughs> the One Ring. All right, well, let's draw first. Sure, we'll discard Mountain, or maybe I just discard the One Ring. I don't really think I'm going to do anything with that. I'm going to play my Mountain, and then I'm just going to pass. I'm going to take more damage from Questing Beast. They're going to get to Elvish Reclaimer for something. And hopefully I get to land a Mana Drain this turn. Cradle? That, that implies Mana Drain's happening. 
Okay. Inti, Sinistral of the Sun. Uh, oh, well, I can't subtlety and mana drain. I guess Inti's fine. And I think I'll mana drain this, yeah. All right. And then they can attack and they get to discard a card to Inti. I can't, pl I guess they have to put the counter on the Reclaimer now because otherwise the uh, Currency Converter token will block. Oh, they just didn't do that? All right, that's odd, but I suppose I'll take it. And block, take four going down to eight. And now I can flip, I have a bunch of mana I need to find an answer to this questing beast, but I guess flipping Jace also kind of does it. Oh, unexpectedly absent. Okay, I can discard Dark Slick Shores, make a treasure. Mm, currency Converter is going to get me the mana I need. I guess I can play... Yeah, I guess I can play the whole Breacher here. It's kind of awkward, but I want to use the Mana Drain Mana. Otherwise, I won't be able to hard cast Subtlety, which I do want to do as well. And then make Inti small. And we're going to go ahead and unexpectedly absent the Questing Beast here before they attack with it, is my plan. So I guess I'll absent it right to the top, but then I have Subtlety to put it back on top. Then I can Jace back maybe Fiery Confluence to kill the Inti. I don't know. Jace Currency Converter is pretty good. Converter does some good stuff. Okay. Escape to the Wilds. I think I actually want to put Questing Beast on top now. The reason is they don't have enough mana to cast it this turn, so it's kind of a bad hit. And so if I'm going to do it when they attack, I might as well do it now. And I still have subtlety up as planned. Okay, so questing beast goes on top, and then what are we exiling here? Because they can they can play land. Wow. I guess they can actually cast it this turn off playing two land. And then I'm just gonna put it back on top. Mm-hmm. Sacking the lotus puddle there is kind of weird, but okay. And then on my turn, I guess what I can do, show game log. Oh yeah, it is put on top, it's not optional. <laughs> is I can unexpectedly absent with Jace if I want to, to make them draw one of those before questing base two, chart a course. Let's attack with these two and then cast chart, no reason to discard. I know there's a currency converter in play. I still think it's better just to to draw two. Well, oh, now I have. <laughs> oh, I guess I couldn't even absent because I don't have double white anymore. Um, well, I can't Mystical Tutor Faithless Looting in the same turn. That doesn't really work too well. But, well, actually, hold on. No. Is there any way around this? Because if I can get Wheel of Fortune, I just win. I guess I can Mystical Tutor for Wheel of Fortune, cast Faithless Looting, and if the card under Wheel is a land, I can Currency Converter and then Jace. That sounds pretty cool to me. I don't know. <laughs> uh, looting. Oh, not quite. Okay, so I'll discard them both. I'll convert them both both because I can put wheel into the graveyard I guess I want a plus one Jace on Inti yeah this didn't actually work very well that was a little little bit greedy I will admit uh let's yeah plus one Jace on Inti and then pass the turn here I do get to make a 2-2 two -two. Mm. I just I'm gonna take a bunch of questing beast damage here. Though the thing is, I guess I I didn't really actually have. I guess what I could have done is instead of casting looting, 
just mystical for swords to plowshares. Maybe that was better. Okay. Uh, I assume they're going to discard a card here. They discard Magda. All right, let's not hit something good here. Robber of the Rich. Sure. Okay. Let's put Wheel of Fortune into the graveyard. Make a 2-2. Two -two. Block the rabbit battery. I mean, I go to four and Jace goes to three, but I then get to cast this Wheel of Fortune. And Robert doesn't stop me. Okay, this is actually going to work out all right somehow. I will... No, I actually don't think I even want to play my land here. Because I want to be able to play Celestial Colonnade this turn. Okay. Uh... Well, I drew a lot of land, but that's that's okay. I'm going to Prismatic Ending the Questing Beast, most likely. Do I want a Teferi Time Raveler? I guess I do want a Teferi Time Raveler. And I guess I'll bounce the Inti. I could also bounce the Subtlety. Let's, given that I want to do that, actually, let's attack with this. Yeah, we seem like we're doing fine here, I think. Um, I haven't played a land yet. Play a land. Well, let me see. If I... Prismatic ending the questing, the beast has bounced the subtle deck and make another 2-2. Two -two. So I have a bunch of blockers. Yeah, that sounds fine. So let's go prismatic ending questing beast. Blue, white, black, green. Oh, yeah, I haven't, I'm not plussing to fairy, so I, I'm not going to be able to do it at any point. Bounce the subtlety, and then pass the turn. Burst lightning actually also kind of does it. And this this should basically lock them out. So let's cast burst lightning on Inti. They can't play anything because Teferi. They can attack and exile a card with Robber. It's not a crazy play to make, honestly. There's some cards I could hit that maybe I wouldn't like. I don't know, Swords to Plowshares or something. I hit <laughs> Swords to Plowshares. Cool. Uh, <laughs> oh, actually, I decided I want to just make a treasure block. Well, whatever. Whole Breacher did its thing. It's not the end of the world if it gets swords. They just didn't swords. Okay, well, I take it. I don't think I want to cast Iteration. I think I want to animate... An attack for five here. Let's see. Bottom. Going to nine. Um, I guess I have... Oh, I guess I have lethal next turn, so I can cast iteration. Because now I can cast land, cast phantasmal image. Copy the whole breacher and pass the turn with subtlety up. And I get to make a rogue end of turn with the currency converter. Okay. I think we got this into a pretty good spot. <laughs> All right. Well, that's fair. That is fair. Uh, I guess I'll draw. I don't think I... Because I don't have spell pierce in the deck anymore. Good beats. Good beats. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, all right. I'm dead. Yeah, I want to see if what my next two cards are, if it'll show me. Scrubland and Ragnar Charm. Right. All right. Well, I thought we had it, but uh, we apparently did not. On to round three. All right. Let's see if we can get a 2-1. I feel like a 2-1 is a respectable record with this deck. I mean, it's a four-color control deck. It's got a Mox, a Mana Drain. Those are good cards for sure. Whole, uh, Questing Beast beat the crap out of me last round. It, it countered, though. It was like a hard counter for the one ring. And then game two, it just caused me all sorts of problems. Though, I mean, they do Firebolt to kill me, which was unfortunate. But, yeah, overall, I think this is a solid deck. But uh, missing that little something-something. All right. Let's play this and pass. If I draw black, I'm clearly going to want to slam Baleful Strix. Because that will make my chart, of course, better. But... If I don't, I'm just going to cast a chart, of course, most likely. I guess I'll play this land. Chart. 
All right, now I can discard Island. Faithless Looting is also kind of borderline here. This isn't like the best Faithless Looting deck in the world, honestly. It's like barely there because of Currency Converter and such. Oh, they discarded a Kroxa. That's kind of weird, but okay. I uh, guess I'll play Baleful Strix. And Mox. And Pass. And I'm not really doing anything, but they did keep a one lander, so uh, this might not take too long. Mm. Honestly, I think it's probably better to attack with Restless Spire than it is to cast Faithless Looting, so I'm just going to do that. Discard Omnath. I did not expect that to be the discard to accompany Kroxa. Uh, I'll put a wall on the bottom. Wall just doesn't seem like it does anything here. It just cycles. And having an 0-4 in play doesn't seem to help much. This is about the turn where if they don't draw a land, their spirit is broken. I know, I know, mine, mine sure would be. Oh, they have a Mox. Okay. They do have a land. Esper Sentinel. Okay. You drew a land and your play was Esper Sentinel. Interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, now I think I will. Faithless Looting. I'll pay my one. And I just drew another island, so my hand has a lot of islands. Oh, Wheel of Fortune. That's kind of interesting. I'm probably going to want to cast Wheel of Fortune at some point. I don't think it has to be now. They're not playing land, so the way I see it is like if they play another land on their turn and they play a spell, I'll probably cast Fire Covenant to kill those two things if, if they play a creature. Oh, they're Mystical Tutoring. What did they... Oh, they must have Flash or something. Manamorphos. Okay, I mean, I'm going to, I guess, uh, have trouble predicting what this particular opponent is up to. They're, they got looks like... What they have looks like quite a brew. Not a, not necessarily bad or anything. I just... I clearly don't have a good picture of what's going on in their deck. And one reason to cast Mystical Tutor on two mana when you didn't on one would have been Flash. But Manamorphos also plays. So if they draw a land here and play a spell, then then I might wheel because they're about to play start playing all their spells. If they're stuck on one land plus mocks and they're not playing anything, then I feel like I'm not in a huge hurry to cast this card because they're already not playing any spells. So Okay, they got red and black. I mean, I might be getting Collective Brutality, in which case, sort to rest or something. In which case, I won't have the option to play wheel, but that would also be okay. Mm -hmm. They drew the black, so they drew a land, and Perchy. Yeah, I guess so. Well, this is where we're at. Uh, I'm just going to do the Fire Covenant here. You can draw a card, because I'm planning on casting a wheel. Hull Breacher would be a nice draw. Oh, Subtlety? Well, subtlety is another reason just to, to chill for a bit. I think, yeah, I can afford to animate. Bash. It gives me another draw to look for Hole Breacher. It's right on top. All right. So now if they tap out, I subtlety and then untap and wheel. If they play like a hand disruption spell, I'll just play subtlety in response and try to attack them with my motley crew. And if they, yeah, if they don't do anything, it's going to be pretty hard for them to... To win Dark Ritual, okay. Hopefully it's something I can subtlety. That'd be nice. Seems pretty likely that it's going to be, yeah. It in fact is, and this this might be enough to prompt a concession even if the whole breacher even without knowing about the whole breacher. Dark ritual to fairy, Esper Sentinel, Manamorphos, Omnath, Mystical, Croxa. They're cooking. That they are. Let them cook. Alright. And they do a Raugrin Triome. Hole Breacher. Wheel of Fortune. And not a lot you can have. Discarded Snapcaster to Fairy Trinket Mage. Yeah, and then this this is just game. I, I, my goal here is to tr like show them as few of the counters in my hand as possible. Just few as few cards as possible, given that 
they're just going to get attacked next turn. I don't have to cast anything. Obviously, if they drew like a balance or something, that would be a, a different thing. They unfortunately can't bring back Kroxa here. <laughs> they don't have enough mana. Okay, well, Restless Spire's getting in, and that'll close out game one. We can beat Mana Screwed opponents. Yes, we can. Uh, Phantasmal Image could be nice against Kroxa, Omnath, Burgi. Nee. Uh, I guess I'm not super excited. Let's try this. All right. Ooh, there it is. Hole Breacher and Wheel all rolled up. So this is going to be one of those Turbo Hole Breacher hands. Uh, clearly the best card I could draw would be Mox Pearl, but Mana Jay would also be great. Though both both would accomplish about the same thing, though. Ooh, they got themselves a fast start, too. If they have a play off this, too, that would have been sick. All right. Well, I'm just going to get Raugren Triome. And if I draw a block, clearly I'll play Baleful Strix. If I don't, I'll just cast Charter Course. Mox Pearl for turn two, Hole Breacher, turn three, Wheel. Now, even if I don't draw that. I think this... I'm glad I have this uh, whole breacher wheel combo because my opponent's hand is very good. I mean, just Mox Urza Saga on the play is pretty tough. Uh, I guess I'm casting Charter Course here, so I should just play that that land. Draw two. There's the Mana Drain. I think I discard Faceless Looting. This is going to be a close one. They're going to make a Saga token. It's going to be a 2-2. Two, two. Then they're going to make a 3-3. Three, three. And then it's, they're both going to become 4-4s. Four, I'm going to attack down to 15, play a land, get attacked down to 7, and then get to go off, maybe? Maybe? Kind of depends on what these turns look like. I, I mean, I assume they're making another creature. If they're not, that would be pretty surprising, but I suppose I would take it. Let's see. Okay, they're tapping their mana. So that disrupts the timeline that I kind of laid out, but they still... Well, we'll see what they do. Lion's Eye Diamond. Oh, this could go in a very different direction. Okay. And my plan is about the same still. Unfortunately, this Burst Lightning is not really going to get the job done. Oh, they're not using the mana. Okay, I'm pretty surprised. You're not using the mana, but you also didn't make a creature. Okay, you're going to play something now. And Bloodstained Mire, see if I can get blue. Yeah, they have the steam vents from game one. And after attacking, show and tell. Guess I'll put in the whole breacher. Ooh, we got ourselves a game. We got ourselves a game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Wheel of Fortune. And let's find Swords to Plowshares. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's Swords to Plowshares. Uh, let's go Mystical Tutor. Actually, we're going to get Unexpectedly Absent. Expressive Iteration. Oh, man, this is so good. Cube is just, just, just fantastic. It really is. Uh, I'll take the Mountain Bottom. Exile this, and then we'll just put this on top here. So you draw it right away. And I guess I'll pass the turn. I used up a lot of, or I'll hit for three. I used up a lot of my treasures, but I think that that's okay. <laughs> they draw an Ulamog. Show and tell for Eldrazi. I haven't seen that for a while, and uh, it worked about as well as it, uh, it historically has. All right, let's play the one ring here. We have managed to assemble kind of a lot of land, which is a little, a little concerning. But hopefully we can <laughs> find something here. All right, attack you. I'm not taking damage on this hit. Now I'm going to 12 here. Let's see if you've got a play. Okay, take one. Draw. Okay, Teferi is pretty great. Let's cast that, and then now uh, play Teferi with Spell Pierce up. Bounce the Construct. I think 
I don't need the Restless Spire here because I'm, I'm a little far away from wanting to attack with a creature land. With a one ring out, it feels like that's just not going to be necessary. And no, despite the fact that I have six lands in hand, it kind of doesn't matter. I've drawn so many cards. Their hand is Ulamog plus two unknowns. I have Spell Pierce for their first play. I don't have Lethal yet, but I can hit him to five, then play Restless Spire, and then the turn after that's Lethal. And uh, <laughs> I think, think we're doing good here. All right. I actually should... <laughs> That is a lot of land, but I kind of feel like I should just not play anything. Tapping the One Ring just seems foolish, given that, uh, I don't know, I could get burned out with some weird... I mean, I'm not, it's not going to happen, but some weird Fire Blast combination could happen, like Incinerate Fire Blast you, and then you take three off the One Ring. And I guess I have Spell Pierce, but Lions I can pay for Spell Pierce. So, no reason to tempt fate here, since they need to do something, and... I can also flashback looting if that ends up being the case. Dark Ritual? Oh, I'm going to Spell Pierce the Dark Ritual for sure. Whatever they're trying to do, Spell Piercing Dark Ritual is a good start. They can't pay for it with Lion's Eye Diamond. This leaves them with one mana. I mean, having them Dark Ritual out some kind of creature, like a Shield Rid or something, would be pretty bad. I mean, I guess, yeah. No reason to tempt fate there. Very frustrating this for them. The Spell Pierce, Lion's Eye Diamond, Dark Ritual, like, interplay, where if you can put the spell you want on the stack, Lion's Eye can protect you from Spell Pierce. But Dark Ritual is a setup spell, so that's not working out so well. And uh, I think we're going to pull out the 2-1. Show and tell Ulamog. I really did not have that on my bingo card when we started this game. But <laughs> show and tell and whole Reacher cast wheel. I mean... I guess looking at the deck, I had Unexpectedly Absent, Swords to Plowshares, and Mystical Tutor is out. Uh, let's take a look. So at the time they cast this... Oh, Teferi also. Because the thing is with 7 mana, there's like so many things that you could have. Or that you, you end up getting to play a lot of different things. And Unexpectedly Absent plus Swords plus Teferi with Mystical Tutor to look for it. And then of course Card Draw. Pretty nice chance, and uh, boom, we got ourselves 100 play points for our 2-1. All right, that'll do it for today. Thanks for watching as we assembled a, you know, relatively fair four-color control deck. But uh, it was a fun to, fun deck to play, and we got to hold Reacher Wheel a lot of people. There's a reason I love first picking this card. All right, that'll do it for today. I'll be back tomorrow with another draft, and I will see you then. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel and you won't miss a single draft.